Hi everyone, and welcome to my Threadripper 1950X retest review. Okay, so you're probably wondering why retest. Well, these are my original samples and the, the um, blank one is the engineering sample that I got sent. And then the one with all the fancy writing and everything on the front, laser cut onto the front, as you're probably used to with all the other reviewers, that's the retail sample. Now, after I published my first review, and I have put this up in some other videos and on Facebook and stuff, uh, if you follow me on the other socials, um, I did get asked by AMD to not use the engineering sample again after the initial review, and then they were gonna swap it around with a normal retail sample. Now that's a bit of a pain in the bum because it's taken a few weeks. So it's kind of put me behind with other board reviews and I have had a couple of other boards uh, arrive that I've literally just sat around waiting. Although you can go to my Rush Kit channel, there'll be a link underneath. I've got a preview video of the um, MSI X399 uh, Gaming Pro Carbon. There's a preview of that on there. And then we've also got a preview of the ASRock Tai Chi as well. Now, uh, I put those up just to kind of keep the flow going while I was waiting for these new CPUs. But what I did have to have to happen when the new CPU arrived, I need to test it on the same board with the same BIOS and everything that I did with the original uh, so that I can di directly compare the results. And that's what we're here to take a look at today. So the CPU got dropped back in the Zenith, which was the original board I got sent to. So it's not I chose the Zenith. It was just the original board that I got sent uh, and I, I need to test them on the same one again. So first things first, what I do want to say is I, I have tested it uh, and we've got a selection of results that I can show you, but we you can also go and have a look at all of the results and compare all of the stuff on the OC3D website. But I do want to talk about overclocking from the start, because you can see I've got a bit of a ghetto setup here. Normally I run a 280 millimeter AIO and uh, with a couple of 140 millimeter fans, and that's normally enough to keep anything cool. With the Threadripper, with, when it's overclocked, the, the level of your temperatures directly comes down to the voltage that gets put into the CPU, whether that's manually or auto. There is, um, just so that you are aware, there is always gonna be a certain fluctuation with your voltages, because the, the CPU can control what's going on, and uh, so far, from what I've seen, especially with the rise and stuff, is no one's directly overriding that yet, so that you can take complete control of your voltages. If anyone's listening, then uh, that is what I think we should be doing because there doesn't seem to be you know, a way to cut it off at the moment. But anyway, so we, um, it, it's directly linked into your voltages. The more the voltages go up, the more the temperatures go up. With the, the difference between the, um, the auto and the overclocked is at auto, there's only up to four cores boosting. Whereas what we would be trying to do with an overclock is force all of the cores to uh, go to that overclocked state. So that creates a lot more heat and a lot more power drain. So for argument's sake, you may get four cores bo boosting to 4.1, 4.2, but you'll create a lot more heat trying to get uh, all 16 running at 3.8 or 4 gigahertz. Now my engineering sample did do four gigahertz, but it was, it, well, I'm not gonna say it was hard, but that's where the ghetto 360 mil come in because the, the four gigahertz at 1.4 volts was you know, on the limits of what I was able to keep cool. The problem that I did find with the new retail sample though, is I couldn't get 1.4, uh, sorry, I couldn't get four gigahertz stable at all and I needed more volts to be able to do that but where 1.4 volts is about the limit of what I can you know effectively call properly um, and that's you know I even with this I literally had a, a fan on top of the GPU blown at the socket fan blown at the back of the socket air conditioning on the room was 16 degrees you know I tried hard to be able to keep things cool, much beyond what you would be able to do at home and live with it. Um, and I just couldn't get it, you know, within what I would call decent levels. So in the end, my overclock drops from four gigahertz with the engineering, where I was actually, actually struggling 
to be able to bench at 3.8 with the new one. And that was at the same volts. So, um, and the other thing is, is I've got the retail sample here that you can see, you can see it's the one with all the writing and everything on it. But the thing that you also need to kind of keep in mind is there is one by the side of me. So I've tested two of the retail ones because I've, um, I'm gonna be doing some bits and bobs with Threadripper alongside my normal um, review. So we've got one that's gonna be just used for reviews now, and then I've got another one which you'll see will get featured in some other stuff uh, coming up soon. So when I say that I've tested two, they were two samples that one's come from AMD, one's come from somewhere else, totally different because one's actually really come from Asia so it's not like it's the same batch or anything and they're both overclocking to about the same point. I did then check up with my, um, uh, I was going to say my mate but it sounds a bit bad but I checked up with uh, eight pack and I asked him at overclockers what kind of level and I didn't tell him any numbers what kind of levels are you getting and he was saying that you know the sort of average normal kind of stuff the, the, the bulk of the CPU samples are doing about 3.8. We need mega cooling for them. So it kind of, once he said 3.8, it kind of fit in with exactly what I'd found with my two totally different batch samples. So it made me feel a little bit better. So anyway, you've had a lot of background stuff going on, but we'll have a look at some of the results. Now you'll see when the first graph comes up. So I've moved out the way so that we can put the graph up. Anyway, so you'll see on here that I've not bothered benching the overclock and that was plain and simple because even at 3.8 gigahertz, I was massively struggling to be able to keep the, the thermals in check. And um, uh, I mean, we were getting up into the 80s and AMD say don't let them go above 70. So it just got to the point where if I dropped it down enough that they were usable temperatures without having to have, you know, everything blowing a hooli in 16 degrees rooms, the, the results just weren't that great. So essentially what I've done is we've got the RT, which is the new retested one, and then we've got the old results. But moving forward from this, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do the normal straight in results and we'll focus on the 4.2 turbo side of things rather than then try and do another run where we have all of the cores at like 3.6 um, uh, or 3.7. Um, so, and the, the reason behind that is it's just literally, if I do an overclock run, it's gonna take me over a day to do another batch of testing. I can't do all of my testing in a single day. Um, so with Cinebench, um, at stock, you can see that we did get a clear boost with the new CPU. And we did also get the same sort of thing with the X265 benchmark as well. I had been told that um, I might get a small increase with the stock runs and they were saying something along the lines of that they, they boost slightly faster and slightly longer with the retail versus the old engineering. The Armark got a massive boost to the point where I even scratched my head a bit about this one, but I wanted to show you this result. But don't forget, you can go and have a look at all of the other results on the OC3D website. But to be fair, they're pretty much the same as the old stock results that we would have got. PC Mark 8 took a nice jump to the top. There was a good few extra points that we got there. It, again, this went even over the overclocked run that we got before. So there was quite a few going on there. So the, the main points that we have from the uh, new to the old is to say that um, I would say that from my experience of the retails, the overclock is slightly lower. Now you are going to need to decide, do you need 16 cores running quicker than they would be, which would be something like, you know, 3.5, 3.6. So do you need them running quicker than that across all of the cores? Or are you happy that your programs are gonna benefit from like your games and the like will benefit from that turbo? So it's going to depend what you need it for. If you buy Threadripper for uh, the process of, you know, multi, multi-threaded tasks like rendering, massive photo editing, you know, all of that sort of stuff, anything to do with 3D, anything that's gonna gobble cores, then you may uh, be wanting to do a manual overclock. If you do want to do a manual overclock, then you are going to have to invest heavily, heavily, into your cooling to the point that I would say that a 360 mil AIO would probably be the absolute bottom of what I would say is feasible and dedicated, dedicated water cooling would probably be where I would be at straight away. The other thing that I would say is, um, I mean, if you are going down that route, you are gonna have to spend a lot of money to keep it cool. 
and that's just going to be um, part and parcel of it. So is also, I would not use auto overclocking tools at all on any brand for these processes. I, you're going, if you want to overclock it, you're going to have to do it the old fashioned, hands on way, and you have to focus on trying to keep your volts as low as possible. The other thing that you need to think about is because of the way that these processes do control the volts themselves, you're almost putting your volts in as a guideline and then you may see them going above. We'd normally turn that down to being um, load line calibration, but this is just something that the, uh, the AMD processes are doing themselves and we've yet to see anyone do an effective total override on them. I wish it, we could just say, this is the maximum volts that we want and it doesn't go above that. And if it's unstable, we know that we have to do work. But at the moment you can set something like three point, let's say we put 1.375 in, it then sometimes it go up to 1.395, 1.417. There's certainly, the, there seems to be very big steps between each one. So you kind of, you get to 1.395 and then if it goes up anymore, it goes up to 1.417. And there's some very um, uh, definite steps between each of the voltages. So there's lots of stuff and information there for you to take on board. This is pretty much me just letting you know my new results with the new CPU. And this are, these are gonna be the results that I'm going to base the other reviews on the MSI and on the Tai Chi on. And we're gonna move on from here and out. Um, I will still be doing overclocking, but I'm just not gonna do endless amounts of tests. So I'll look to see what the board is capable of. I'm gonna to look to see you know, if the VRMs get hot. All of that normal stuff, I'm then just not going to spend another day, day and a half running loads more tests again because the difference between the uh, two is so narrow that I don't particularly think it's um, needed. And, it, and in all honesty, um, I think I may even start to think about just for Threadripper getting some dedicated or building a dedicated water cooling rig or something just to be able to test it. So. I don't know how, but we do seem to have got to a point with CPUs lately that we, we need endless and endless amounts of cooling. Um, we seem to have gone one way where they were getting cooler and now we're going back again. But anyway, so that's my results for Threadripper. I would love to hear your thoughts underneath. I would also love to hear your thoughts on the OC3D forums. If you would like to click through, come and join, become a member. If you don't get your forum verification email, and that's very uh, critical. It will either go, it should go into your inbox, but it may go into your spam. If you don't get the verification email, that's why you can't post on the forums. If you go to the contact link at the bottom of the forums, that comes direct to me, and then I will manually add you myself. Um, so yes, all of those options are there for you. Um, if you've tried to join before and you've been unsuccessful getting that email, you can still just drop me um, your username and I can manually add you. So yes, um, that has been me with my Threadripper retest. I feel like I'm now kind of now ready to start what I should have been doing a good few weeks ago and I'm a bit frustrated at how far behind I am now. But thank you very much for watching. This has been Tiny Tom Logan. And yeah, we've not had one of these for a while. Out. Ding.